Hello everyone, this is Powell Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're going to be talking about a unique snow and ice storm track as the polar vortex starts stretching and a look at the rest of January. So if you do like weather related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. Good morning everyone, this is your January 20th update and what we're taking a look at this morning is the overall ensemble member guidance of the next seven days on the 500 millibar of the European and you can actually see this polar vortex starting to show signs of kind of stretching and, and elongating and pushing some of that cold Arctic air into our eastern parts of the U.S. so you can see the, the below average temperatures predominantly for the next seven days more or less in our southern regions all the way into our east uh, areas of the US and then our ridge is out here in the west that's going to be seeing your above average temperatures and then as we extend the view and look at the rest of January you can see the last week of January you still see that cold arctic air plunging southward so you have your coldest anomalies right here in, in the portions of the southeast while the ridge still builds but starts to kind of push back and not be as intense as it's going to be the first seven days. So let's take a look at the overall setup this morning for your hazards because yeah, there's that polar vortex starting to stretch. That is wind chilled advisories up here to the north where that cold Arctic air is starting to plunge and even into the portions of New England here, some of these dangerous wind chills are gonna be starting to take place. It's gonna start pushing further south We've seen sporadic uh, winter weather advisories into portions of Kentucky and then along the coast here with our snowstorm, kind of a unique track that we're going to talk about. But look at this. I mean, we've got winter weather advisories all the way down to the deep south of Texas and a very rare event of winter storm warning all the way down here near the Rio Grande Valley. In fact, we had that uh, Arctic outbreak back in February where they issued a winter storm warning. And this is actually the second one in the past 12 months, all the way down here in the Rio Grande Valley. Before that, it was all the way back until 2011 before they saw a winter storm warning in this part of the country. And before that, it was 2004. So we're only talking four winter storm warnings in the, almost the last 20 years. So that's kind of a rare event <laughs> to see something like that taking place, but that's what's on the table. And even a winter weather advisory all the way down here in the southern Mississippi. <laughs> yes, and then even into portions of Louisiana here, where they're gonna be seeing some of that kind of the icy setup uh, over the next day or two. So let's take a look at the wind chills this morning as of 6 a.m. And man, look at that. That's 30 below. Feels like temperatures. That is dangerous. That's frostbite material in 10 to 15 minute time frame. So definitely bundle up up here. But man, look at those single digit wind chills getting all the way down into Oklahoma and even below zero. And that even down here in two portions of Texas, now we're talking single digits. So that's the intrusion of some of that Arctic air plunging southward, and it's only going to be intensifying as we get through the next day or two. So let's take a look at the overall setup this morning with our first system that came across, brought some snow into southern Missouri uh, late, late yesterday, dumped about a one to three inch swath. I know Bowling Green had about two and a half inches from that particular system. That's going to continue pushing up. But more or less, this is pushing off into places, into portions of Jersey, getting into Philly and the New York City. We're not talking much snow here. We're talking maybe an inch or two out of this deal as this continues to push off. And then out west, we see our disturbance that's coming down with that cold Arctic air. We're starting to see, yes, yeah, snow starting to fly. And out here in far west Texas, even Mexico is going to be starting to get some snow. We start to see the changeover to some of that icy mix all the way down into Austin, San Antonio, that, down here in the deep south, where they're going to be seeing some of that icy mixing glaze over starting to tr transition. And we see that uh, rain coming in for Washington and then transferring into some of that snow as we get into the, some of the higher elevations and portions of Idaho here. But wow, let me, let me zoom in here to Texas because man, this is a rare event. Yeah, that is blue. That is snow, guys, in Mexico of all places. It misses pretty much most of Texas. 
but we got snow breaking out in Mexico, and then we have that, you know, that that ice pellets here all the way down into the Rio Grande Valley. So that is definitely a rare event on the table as you got to have that Arctic air plunge, first of all, all the way down into the Rio Grande Valley. And then you have to have a, a disturbance moving across at the same time for in order for this to happen. That doesn't happen very often, right? That has just not happened very often. And here's the overall snow uh, season to date totals. Look at the graph on the, on the right-hand corner of your screen and look at the donut here. We're, you know, this is places in uh, Illinois, places in Indiana, and you know, and it's looking at that snow in Mexico, and it's like, really, come on, guys. <laughs> I mean, it's how does it snow in Mexico before it snows in Indiana? That is just not fair, right? <laughs> I get it, I get it. You just been missing, I, you just been missing the snow here in Indiana, and it's just kind of a stroke of bad luck, um, it, you know, because you got snow all around you but you got that donut in between. So that's what's taking place so far. So let's take a look at the overall setup as we move through that Friday morning. And yeah, there's that cold Arctic air continuing to plunge. And there's that unique track. We've got that snow in Mexico. We've got all the freezing rain and drizzle along the coast here, just kind of hugging the coast. You know, you're talking places like the beach <laughs> is getting freezing rain, you know, all the way down to the coast of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, North Carolina, snow. I mean, it, you know, it's this is more or less missing the interior regions, but getting all the coastal regions along the coast here with kind of that icy, icy snow, snow mix uh, and then, you know, sleep pellets at time. And then we've got that snow, a little bit sporadic snow showers into the midsection uh, of the country. So. Let's expand to look at the Friday morning temperatures because, yeah, that cold Arctic air continues to plunge down. Now we're talking single digits and much of Kansas, you know, even 12 in Wichita Falls. That's pretty much the coldest temperatures of the season. 23 in Dallas. So definitely some cold air as you're starting to see these fingers of the polar vortex starting to you know, push down. It, it's seeing the snowpack, right? It's four below in Des Moines. So it's seeing where the snow is and where it's at. That's going to add and, and, and drop those temperatures even further. So there's your negative values all the way into New England too. So now we're going to be starting to see places into say Pittsburgh, zero degrees, even could actually get below zero by the time we get into tomorrow morning and, and even into portions of uh, Saturday morning as it just continues to drop. But yeah, the thing about this system, it, it's progressive. I mean, it is just flying. It's moving quick. It's not coming up, it's moving out. So when it's moving out, it's bringing all the snow and ice to the places really along the coast. And it's mainly ice along the coast where it's gonna be dangerous. And we'll kind of zoom into these areas where the, all the particular ice is gonna be taking place. But yeah, this looks like it'd be more of a progressive system as it continues to push off the coast. But what we're gonna to have to be concerned about over the next day or two is the ice in Savannah. Anything over an eighth of an inch, you can't drive on that stuff. It's dangerous stuff. It's hard to get on the road and stuff like this. Charleston, you know, almost a tenth of an inch here. Myrtle Beach, I mean, this is along the coast, guys. All this this icy, messy setup. And as we move up, going into Wilmington, that's a quarter inch. You know, Jacksonville, that's a quarter inch. So some of this could be damaging ice, ice, you know, taking down power lines, power outages down here into our extreme off near the coastal regions as that st as, as the storm continues uh, to push off the coast. So on the expanded version, yeah, look at where all the ice is just along the coastal areas where and then nothing really in the interior it's just mainly a unique coastal event with this particular setup as it continues pushing off the coast and there's the snow i mean literally hardly anything in texas it waits till mexico before it starts snowing <laughs> right so that's a that's a unique track i mean you got snow in mexico snow down here in mexico it misses most of the interior and then heads off the coast with this progressive system. So the snow totals out of this deal with that first little system coming in and then the back system is mainly going to be off the beach, right? I mean, you're talking a widespread swath of one to three inches. And then you might have some isolated amounts along the, along the beaches here, you know, along the coastal areas here, four or five, possibly six inches. But that's about it, guys. It's going to be moving off to the coast fairly quick as it's going to be a progressive system from this particular setup. So 
as we move forward, look at Saturday. I mean, it's gone. <laughs> it is flying off the coast. We're already looking at our next little clipper system that's going to be coming in in portions of Minnesota here into Wisconsin with some more snow for you guys up here. But look, I mean, it. look how fast it kind of moves. I mean, this is Monday. So that moves out and we have another one move in. So we have these little clipper systems that leave like one or two, one, two, three inches of snow into Wisconsin, gets it gets into Michigan or the upper Great Lakes. We've got some welcome rain down here in Texas, but for the most part, it's more or less in central and south Texas. Sorry guys, it misses most of Dallas, right? I mean, it's on the southern fringes again, and I'm not really expecting that much rain on Monday, you know, from this particular system in the Dallas Fort Worth area, it's all south. So your severe drought just continues to expand in this region where you're just desperately dry for precipitation and it's just not happening currently right now so let's take a look at the overall setup by friday as again i think this this pattern for next week continues to remain progressive it's fast moving so you have these little systems that come in but they come in and out so you got to yeah and there's another system over michigan so you got actually three you got, you got Monday, you got Wednesday, and you got Friday. As these continue to just push, push out. Hey, we're trying, Indiana. We're trying, right? We're trying to get you some snow. I know you want some snow, all right? Let's see if it happens on Friday. <laughs> so that pushes into portions of o Omaha, and that will progress. But it's a quick mover. It's it's just just it's just a quick mover as these move move across. Let's take a look at the overall temperatures. Uh, it's cold now. I showed you now, but. Look at look at the end of January. It's predominantly where your most, you know, seasonable below average temperatures are gonna be off the east coast. I mean, it's southeast coast, you know, east coast, northeast, New England, all these below average temperatures, well, actually, well below average te temperatures at times. We're starting to see it, you know, somewhat so cool down, starting again, you know, out here in our west. Where you're above average predominantly for the next seven days but then the last seven days of uh, january you're going to start seeing some of those cooler temperatures start to filter in or at least below average temperatures start to filter in and then by the time we get into that first week of february i think the east coast starts to modify you're not going to be as below average as has you been and then now the switch is on to the west coast where you're going to be starting to see those those below average temperatures are starting to take place for you know this time of year going into February. Typically, February is cold everywhere. It's the deepest part of winter. So as we get into the, you know, where the precipitation is gonna be, as we get into that first week of February, yeah, I think the atmospheric atmospheric river for the most part is not gonna be as intense as we've seen over the last couple of months. So it's gonna start to die down. It's still gonna be there. But it's it's not gonna it's gonna wane. It's not gonna be nearly as intense, really, kind of going forward that I that I'm expecting. But we're gonna start to see you know ab above average temp above average precipitation into portions of the central and eastern two thirds of the U.S. You know as we get into that first week of February. And if you look into the snow possibilities as we get into the first week of February, here's the probabilities of some of the ensemble member guidance that we have to look at right now of where possibly a one inch snow is gonna be falling by the time we get into the first week of February. There's your 100% of snow, you know, for a, more, more or less in these red shaded areas. But you can see as we push down where right now the probabilities of some of the snow is gonna be flying as we get into the first week of February, you know, going forward. So it just gives you a snapshot of an idea of what we're kind of looking at ahead uh, so you can kind of know what to expect that's on the table so hey i appreciate you guys uh, watching do like this video definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where i protect you before and after the story